Uh, I want to greet you this uh, evening on the 28th of December in uh, 2022. You will pardon me, we are experiencing load shedding and therefore the picture will be poor. Don't focus on the picture, but focus on the message itself. It would be irresponsible for me not to send you some reflections on the new year. Uh, let's pray first before I share with you some reflections on the new year. Just some things to ponder as we, by God's grace, hoping to, uh, to, to finish this year and to enter the new year in three, three days' time, 29, 30, 31st, in three days' time, God willing, we are trusting to enter the new year. How do we prepare for it? That is the issue that I, I want us to reflect on. Let's pray though. Father, we are thankful to you for giving us 362 days of uh, 2022. I'm not sure whether we have used all those 362 days profitably. Uh, now we are trusting that it will please you to allow us to see the new year. Uh, we are praying that uh, you will uh, you will usher us into the new year. We want to pray for many who had hoped that they would see twenty twenty three. Some died in, in Vanabel Park in that uh, explosion of that vehicle that was conveying or taking things, carrying uh, ga gas products to Botswana. So they've lost their lives. I'm sure there are people who died today. There may be some who will die tomorrow. But by your grace, you may allow us to see in 2023. Guide us in our reflection on this coming year. I'm sensing in my spirit that you don't want me to say the ordinary things that people say when they are thinking of the year that is ahead of them. Promises and prophetic utterances, all the familiar things that we often do, often say. We are praying that uh, you will just speak very simply with us, reason with us, uh, help us to reflect on the year we are just about to end. Help me to speak sincerely, not religiously, just to open my heart to your people. Uh, I pray in the name of Christ. I have prayed. Amen. When we're thinking of the new year, the best thing to do, I think, I'm simply reflecting with you, is to reflect on the year that has passed, just to reflect on it. God had given you 365 days. How have you used the 362 days which we have already 
finished of 2022. Just to reflect on it. When you reflect on it, if you do uh, what you call spiritual journaling, it would be good for you to go through your journal for this year to see the promises that God had given you this year and those that were fulfilled this year. And just to thank God for that. That would be a good thing. And to look at the promises that God gave you for this year, which have not yet been fulfilled, and talk to God about it. If God had said he was going to do them this year, find out why they were not fulfilled this year. Think of just the long-term promises that God gave you this year. Look at them and continue to pray, pray, pray about them. That God in his good time, he will fulfill them. Just reflect on this year. For, for us to be rushing to the, to the following year without, without reflecting on this year, it's not responsible. Now, you need to be objective in your reflecting on this year. Just be, be objective. Don't only look at things that are positive. Look at the mistakes that you did this year. Uh, I would suppose that you have asked God to forgive you for those uh, mistakes that you have done, you have made this year. But there's nothing wrong if you again just tell God how sorry you are that you made some blunders this year. Ask Him to help you not to repeat them in the coming year. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong in that, in repenting, uh, repenting from uh, the mistakes. I'm being, I'm being kind, I call them mistakes. It could be mistakes, but it could also be sins. So I ask God to forgive you so that when you enter next year, you are not carrying the baggage, the unwanted baggage of the previous year. That would be helpful. But then it would be helpful also to note the outstanding things that God did this year, just things that stand out. Uh, celebrate the Lord's goodness for those outstanding uh, things that God did for you this year. I'm not thinking of the gifts uh, that he's given you, even though they included, but I'm thinking more importantly of the exploits that you've done for the Lord this year. If you're a minister, the messages that you preached and the results that uh, came from those messages, if you are an evangelist, uh, the crusades that you held this year and people that were drawn into the kingdom of God through your ministry. If you understand something about discipleship and you are discipling people this year and some experience some breakthroughs and uh, both you and the people of discipling are aware of the breakthroughs that uh, you received this year, then you thank God for those exploits. So I'm suggesting that you reflect on this year, just reflect very objectively, ask the Spirit of God to guide you as you, as you reflect on this year. What is the point if you enter next year and you have not reflected this year? May I be honest with you 
But what I'm suggesting you do, it's not something that I myself have done. Uh, I prayed in the beginning that the, that the Lord would guide, guide me and respect to you. Maybe you don't know that as we speak to people, actually God is the one speaking. And therefore, when he speaks to you, he's also speaking to me. It's important for you to know that as he speaks to you, he's speaking to me. Uh, I wish I was not traveling. I wish it were possible for me to have taken three days of retreat just to reflect on what has taken place this year. I will not have three days of retreat, but I may have a few days at the beginning of the year just to reflect on this past year. That's the first thing that I'm sensing the Spirit of God is uh, saying I should share with you. It is possible that God has spoken to you about what he intends to do next year. There are a few things that God has said uh, to me about what he intends to do next year. But I think I'll share those on the 31st when we're preparing for the crossover. I'm simply looking generally to next year and generally to the year that has passed. Now, the second thing I think you need to do is to ask God what his plans are for next year. Uh, his plans generally, but his plans particularly as they concern you. There's nothing wrong in asking God, God, you are allowing me to enter into next year. But why? What are the things that you want to accomplish through me? I want you to learn that God is a person. We can talk with him. It's really important for us to grasp that. The Bible is a story of the conversations that God uh, had with his people. They were talking. He's talking to Abraham, he's talking to Moses, he's talking to many others. He was just conversing with them. So you can talk with him and ask him very honestly and say, God, I don't want to waste uh, the years that will give me next year. What is the best way to, to live for you first of all and to serve you next year? Don't be thinking of serving him. Think, think of you living with him. Think of you fellowshipping with him. Uh, don't think of working. Think of walking walking with him. So ask him, what, what are your plans for me? What is it that you want the two of us, me and you, to do next day? If you're a minister, this will inform your year plan. Uh, you could ask, first of all, what God wants to do for you as a person. And then you write those things down, the things that God intends uh, to do with you, through you, and for you next year. You as a person. You could ask what plans he has for your family, for you, your wife, and children. Uh, particularly if your children are still staying with you at home. Then you note those things. Then if you are serving God in whatever capacity, then you ask what he wants you to do, what he plans to do, so that 
what it plans to do will inform your year plan. The things that he, he wants you to definitely do uh, next year. That's a very pra practical way of uh, preparing for next year. Talking to your, to your father who loves you, the one with whom you've got a very intimate relationship. You are discussing issues with him. You can talk freely with him. So discuss uh, those things with him. There would be nothing wrong in asking him if he wishes to, to take you into his confidence. Uh, there are scriptures that say that God takes certain people into confidence. There are scriptures that say so. I think there's one in Psalm. I don't know if I can find it now. That talks about, about God taking uh, his people into confidence. I won't bother to look for it now. I wish I could. And God can take you into confidence. He can. He can take you into confidence and tell you what he intends to do next year. Now, when he does so, he does not do so so that you could brag about it. When we are still growing and we are not mature, it's easy for us to brag about things that we actually not, we don't need to brag about. It's possible for us to brag about such things. Um, but when we grow, and we learn to walk with God. There's no need for us to prove anything to anyone. So we don't brag about things. We ask God if he allows us to share what he tells us. He may say, no, don't say it. Uh, I am just, uh, I am just, Revealing, divulging this to you. Uh, I'm divulging this to you. But I am not divulging this to you so that you might share it with others. No. The verse I was looking for is Proverbs 3 and verse 32. It says, For the Lord detests uh, a perverse man but he takes the upright into his confidence. That's Proverbs 3.32. But he takes the upright into his confidence. There are several other scriptures there, and apart from that one, but that's the one that I was thinking about, that God in his grace will share with us what he intends to do next year. But usually when he shares with you what he intends to do next year, he's not gossiping. Uh, he is telling you so that you might have a role to play in what he wants to do. Uh, he wants you to have a role to play and therefore he tells you that he intends to do such and such. As Psalm 25 also says the same thing, the Lord, confides in those who fear him. Thus, Psalm 25 and verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. The Lord confides, confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. So if you fear God and you are a co-worker of, uh, of God, as the Bible says, they are his co-workers. Then you can ask him, uh, what do you intend to do in South Africa? What are, what are you going to do with the problems of facing in this country? 
uh, what are you going to do about leadership? Uh, what are your plans for the continent of Africa? What, what are your plans for this region of the continent called Southern Africa? Uh, what do you intend to do for the continent at large? What are your plans for the world? What about revival? What must we do to expedite uh, the coming of revival? What must we do to increase the raising of disciples? So we'll be discussing these issues. Prayer is a discussion with God asking him if he wants to confide on you. You could even ask him if he tells you what he intends to do. Ask him if he's permitting you then to share it with others. He may say yes. He may say no, I'm just telling you. You could even ask him, you're telling me now what role do you want me to play? Is there a role you want me to play? and God may show you what role he wants you to play. So I've said that uh, you must reflect on what you have done this year, the promises God has given you, the mistakes you've made so that you will not repeat them. Ask God to forgive you for those uh, mistakes that you made this year. Then note uh, some things that God said, uh, promises that he gave you, gave you for this year, which has already happened, and thank him for it. And there may be promises that he's given you this year, which are carrying over to next year. Just reflect. All I'm saying is that reflect on 2022. That's all I'm saying. And in your reflection, be honest. In your reflection, be objective. In your reflection, ask God to speak openly to you. Do your reflection with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as you reflect on this year. Ask God to help you. And then, when you are thinking then of next year, the battery still, I still have it, uh, despite the load, load shedding. Uh, with my computer, the other computer for me to read scriptures, oh, the battery is getting, uh, is finished. So I'll simply paraphrase some scriptures then uh, because of that. Uh, ask him what he wants you to do this year, uh, what plans he has for you, what plans he has for, for your family, what plans he has for your work. Uh, ask if he could confide on you concerning this year, concerning your, your family, your church, your nation, the region of Southern Africa, the continent itself, etc. But there are a few scriptures that I would want to read. I'm not sure whether the computer will allow me to, and I'm not sharing the screen on this computer. I did not plan to share the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to share the screen and get the, the verses as well. I'll try to do that because I still have the, I still have some the battery is not completely out. If if I could share the screen, I'll do that. I'll do that. Share the screen. And I'm trusting that uh, the screen is not obscuring me. You can still see me. So there are a few verses that I would want us to reflect on. Um, just a few scriptures. And I'm trusting that uh, God will speak more 
to you about them. Sometimes when we speak, and if you're, you are a spiritual person, you want God to speak to you, God will explain more than what we're saying. The first one is Philippians 3. Um, I just want to extract a thought there. I'm not dealing with it in its context. If you pardon me for that. Uh, Philippians 3 verse 12, but I want to focus mainly on verse 13. He says, not that I have already obtained all this, or I have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. And what I was talking about in the previous verses was that he, wanted, he wants to know God, he wants to know Christ. That's, that's, that's what he's talking about in verses 8, 9, 10. He's talking about the preeminence of knowing Christ. He says he has decided to lose everything for the sake of knowing Christ. Then he says he wants to know Christ. Now, it is in that context that he says in verse 12, he has not, he has not already attained all that. What he has not already attained is the knowledge of Christ. Uh, then he says in verse 13, brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. Uh, this, this knowledge, this intimate, personal, knowledge, this experiential knowledge of God. But one thing that I do, I forget what is behind and I'm straining towards what is ahead. Let me extract that verse. That uh, maybe the best thing to do is to forget after you have reflected on 2022, having thanked God for what he has done for you, uh, having asked him to forgive you for the mistakes you made this year. Forget then about this year. Because if you bask on the glories of 2022, uh, you'll be fixated on 2022 and celebrating your achievements in 2022. What has been achieved, achieved has been achieved. So you can't waste your time celebrating that because there is yet so much yet to be achieved. And therefore you must forget your achievements of 2022. But also uh, forget the, the mistakes of 2022. You have discussed them with God. You have asked him to forgive you and he has forgiven you according to his word. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. So don't then allow the mistakes of last year to oppress you, to delay you. You must uh, be facing next year not fearing that we'll be repeating the mistakes that we did last year. Uh, maybe this 2022 was not a very good year. Many people have said so. Many people have said that 2022 was a very difficult year. Very difficult year. So don't export the tragedies of 2022 the heartaches of 2022, don't do that. The difficulties of 2022 must remain in 2022. And uh, enter next year with new expectations, with new anticipa anticipations. Uh, forget what is behind. Strain yourself to what to what is ahead. Have a sense of anticipation, sense of excitement, sense of um, uh, expectation for 2023. 
And I'm getting that from this, this at Philippians 3.13. You must forget what is behind and you must press on to what is ahead of you. God always has something ahead of you. That's the thought we're getting from that Philippians 3, verses 12 to 14. Isaiah 43 also says the same thing. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. It really says the same thing. It may be using a different words for the same thing. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. 18 says, forget the former things. When you enter into 2023, 2022 will be the former year. And today, when you look at what happened yesterday, yesterday is the former day. So forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on former things. Some people will dwell on the past. They will go, I mean, back to 20 years, 20 years back in their lives and begin to regret, uh, to regret for what took place 20 years ago. You wish that it had not, it had, it had not happened. You can't progress that way. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Even on the immediate past. Learn the lessons and move on. Uh, don't dwell on the past. Then verse 19 seems to be a promise. And I think it is a promise. God always promises us things. He says, see, I am doing a new thing. See, I am doing a new thing. And the, the, the first new thing that God is doing is to usher you into 2023. That's a new thing. Because you have never lived in 2023. No one has. So 2023 is a new year coming with new things. Uh, new year coming with new things. So it says forget the former things, don't dwell on them. Isaiah 43 and verse 19 says, see, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. So you dwell on the new thing that God will be doing, or if he tells you what the what is this new thing, that will be doing, then prepare yourself for the new thing that God will be doing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? It will even make, I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. Obviously, when the Bible speaks of rivers in the desert, it's, it, it speaks of revival. Revival. God will turn your desert into an, into an oasis. Um, things will spring forth in the desert. And this verse could be speaking largely to the church and talking about the fact that the spiritual desert in which the church has been traversing uh, has been uh, um, experiencing will be the thing of the past because God is doing a new thing. So this verse could apply to you as a person. This verse could apply to the body of Christ. This verse could apply to the era in which we are that God is planning to send us a revival and is going to turn a wilderness into an oasis. So that scripture is very helpful. I would want you to
to reflect on it. Let me just mention three uh, other scriptures. One is found in Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 12. Even though God was talking to the children of Israel, there's nothing wrong in learning from that and see if we, we could apply it to our lives. The children of Israel were slaves for 400, 430 years in Egypt. And it took God to liberate them from, uh, from many generations of, cap of captivity in Egypt. And they used a man called Moses. You remember about the plagues that God sent to Egypt, several plagues, and those plagues, each of those plagues had to do with the God that was worshipped, the idols that were worshipped in Egypt. Then in chapter 12, then they were finally taken out of Egypt, the Bible says, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. They are still in Egypt. They are just about to leave Egypt. So he speaks to them um, to, to, to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. He says, this month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Uh, there's something very deep there, though that your year could begin even in the middle of a year. God could say in June, on the 14th of June, as far as my walk with you, my spiritual walk with you, this first, this 14th of June is the first day of your first year. Or God could say the 1st of January, uh, 2023, Three is the first uh, month. January is the first month, and the first of January is the first day. And 2023 is the first year for you. In other words, God will begin to do new things. Uh, even though you may have been born in 1963, uh, but spiritually, God may say a certain date, a, a certain month, a certain year is the first year for you. So the first month of your year. May I just say uh, with simplicity, may 2023 be a new year in the true sense of the word. May it be, may it be the first year for you the first year of experiencing God, experiencing his exploits, when you will be in, you will be uh, in a way that will surprise you, experience the things we are reading about in the Bible, the things that happen to others, and those things will happen to you, you will experience them. And those things will be um, will, will be new. You will experience what Paul experienced, what Elijah experienced, what Moses experienced. You will even be surprised. You will say, I never thought I could experience what these brothers and sisters experienced. And it will be the first experience of really walking with God at that level. I'm trusting that 2023 will be a new year for you. You will experience new things. We're reading from Exodus 12, verses 1 and 2. Maybe I should just use two scriptures and then we'll close. I was just reflecting really very freely with you. I'm not preaching to you. I'm just discussing issues with you. 
There's a scripture in Job 8 verse 9. I want to look at Job 8 verse 9 and see if there is nothing that we can learn there. Job chapter 8. Job chapter 8 and verse 9. I'm not sure whether there's anything that I would want to say there, but I just wrote it down. No, it's verse seven. I wrote it down. Let's look at it. Your beginning will seem humble, but so prosperous will be your future. Uh, that scripture speaks just generally of your background. Some of us have got a very, very humble background. Maybe some of you might be surprised when we tell you about our background, where we grew up, who our parents are, the struggles we faced as we're growing up. That's not a lot of everyone. Maybe for you, um, you were blessed. You, your parents were highly educated, highly placed in society. Um, they had cars in your home. There was plenty of food, and you you really lived you lived an, an opulent life. We thank God for that. If that is your background, you need to thank God for. But if your background was a poor background, you face some struggles, and now you're doing well, and people can imagine that you come from that background, thank God for it. But it could also be speaking of how that this year, you are really not a luminary. You are not an important, an important person. You are living a humble life and you are satisfied with it. You really were satisfied with it. And then next year, without an expectation, God will catapult you into great heights. You may pinch yourself and say, ah, I never thought I would be where I am this year. So prosperous will be your future. As long as you are alive, you always still have a future you still have a future. And you can't fully, fully fathom your future. Only God knows what he has in store for you. So reflect on Job 8, verse 7. If it says something to you, it's all right. If it does not say anything, it's still all right. Let's go to Psalm 65 and verse 11. Psalm chapter 65, verse 11. I just reflect, I'm just reflecting with you quite frankly. Uh, Psalm 65 and verse 11. I think there might be something from that scripture. Psalm 65 verse 11. It says in verse 11, I was there in the computer, went up again. Verse 11 says, Psalm 65. It says, what's going on in this computer? I'm sorry. Um, in verse 11, it says, you crown the year with your bounty. I didn't read the verses that precede this to get the context. Yeah, if you go back in verse 9, you care for the land and you water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have ordained it. You know that uh, ancient Israel was an agri agrarian society. They were living in agriculture. So the issue of water and soil and plants and 
harvest was a big thing. He just speaks of God giving people abundance of things. Then he says, you drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and you bless its crops. It just speaks of blessing. God giving people blessings. Then verse 11 says, you crown the year with your bounty and your cuts overflow with abundance. This could be true of 2022 for you, that God crowned the year with, with bounty. Or you could be asking that next year will be a year that God crowns with abundance. Crowns with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow, the hills, are clothed with gladness. You could take that and pray and project it, project it to this coming year and ask that this will be your experience for this coming year. Maybe let me just use one verse then that you know just to encourage you. Uh, Philippians 4 verse 6, you know it. It tells us not to be anxious about anything but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we must make our needs, our requests, and known to God. And then the peace of God will umpire or garrison in our hearts and our minds. I just want to focus on verse uh, 40, uh, verse 6. Don't be anxious about 2023. Don't be anxious. Uh, the God who was faithful to you in 2022, he will continue to be faithful to you in 2023. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change. So, he will prove faithful to you. So don't be entering 2023 with fears and with apprehensions, with, um, with anxieties. No, no. Uh, just enter 2023 with a sense of hope, uh, with a sense of expectation with knowing that God will do great and wonderful things. I think that's enough. I just wanted to share those, the other scriptures I could have read, like Psalm 21, 31 verse 15, our, our time is in his hands. Verse 31, 15, our times are in his hands. So relax, your times are not in your own hands. In your times are in no one else's hands. They are in the hands of a faithful God. Just reflect on those verses that we've read. Philippians 3, 12 to 14. Isaiah 48, 18 and 19. Uh, we went to Exodus 12, verses 1 and 2. We read Job, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 7. Chapter 8, verse 7. Then we looked at Psalm 65, verse 11. And I concluded with Philippians 4 and verse 6. I merely alluded to Psalm 31, verse 15. Psalm 31, verse 15. Just read those scriptures. And when you read scriptures for yourself, God will say things to you which he has not said to me or through me. Just pray, but uh, I think next year will be a good year because we're entering it with a good God who has never failed us and who will never fail us. The Lord bless you uh, in 2023.
Father, I simply just say it very simply in a very simple manner. Um, I, I was just reflecting on what you might uh, want me to say uh, to your people. I told them that they must reflect on this year that is that is just about to elapse. And thank you for the good things that you've done for them. I ask you, you to forgive them for the mistakes they have made. Ask you if you could confide on them about anything concerning next year. And they should ask you whether you permit them to share uh, that which you are confiding on them, uh, on them about, confiding on them about. Then we reflected about this year, we read some scriptures. Please, please add blessings to the reading of your word. Let these simple scriptures that we explained, explained in a simple manner really have a profound impact on your people, very deep impact on your people, even the impact that I am not anticipating as I'm speaking to you. Do something unimaginable using your word. May I ask you to bless your people in general and those who have an opportunity to watch this recording. We thank you. Please help me now to reflect on the things that I was sharing with your people. Some of the things I was sharing, they were occurring to me for the first time. And the Spirit of God was also speaking to me. Give me my own time of reflecting on the scriptures. Thank you that even though uh, the uh, uh, we're experiencing load shedding, there's sufficient light for me to share this with your people. Thank you that the battery could uh, hold on. Its life could be prolonged so that we could do this recording. We do thank and bless you. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. The Lord bless you. If you want to share with me what you are sensing, I would be happy if there are some observations that you have, you want to make, it's all right. I would, I would appreciate that. Now the Lord bless you. Pray for me too. That next day will be fruitful. The Lord will guide me. I will work closely with him. That my love will be pleasing to the Lord. And that the Lord will use me in whatever manner he wants to use me. If there are new doors he wants to open, pray that God will open those doors. Again, have a blessed New Year. Thank you.